Okay, it's recording and we're recording. We're in Stew Pony still. Stew Pony Wharf with Stowerton Castle oh, behind us. Stew Pony. I'm going to Stew Pony. Stew Pony. Well, whatever we do, it'll be wrong. Yeah, it's probably Snorp. I don't know. Stew Pony sounds good to me. So, we are wherever we are <laughs> outside of this castle, which is not really a castle. I mean, it is a sort of a crenellated house sort of thing with kind of Henry VIII and chimneys and all of that. It turns out it's more interesting than I thought it was. So in the last video, I, as we finished, I sort of just said that there was this weird castle on the hill there, and no doubt in the comments for the last four days I've been hearing nothing, but, you know, how did you not know about Reginald Pohl? So, I was tired. <laughs> Tell me about Reginald Pohl. Reginald Pohl was the Archbishop of Canterbury towards the end of his life. And he was made a cardinal during the reign of Henry VIII. He was the son of Margaret Pole, who factored into a great many of the intrigues around the sort of middle reign of Henry. Quite an interesting story. Basically, Reginald Pole was born here. He spent most of his life overseas under Henry's reign as the cardinal. He'd been raised up by the Pope kind of against his will, or at least against his protestations. He was sort of there during the time that Henry VIII became a Protestant. And Henry um, basically killed his entire family. Including? Including his mother. Including just about everybody ultimately ended up being executed. What happened to thingy? Reginald? Reginald stayed over there um, in France and Italy until Elizabeth died. And then there was some confusion that got uh, Lady Jane Grey onto the throne, although she was not um, sort of officially, like she, she was basically the queen for a week, spent the entire time in prison and then was beheaded. Um, really unfortunate for her. And, um, and then Mary came down and swept into power as Mary Tudor. And at that moment made, um, well, sort of a series of charges and everything that led to the then Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Cranmer, being um, removed from office rather surreptitiously, sort of, you know, suddenly um, by burning. Actually, he stuck his own right hand into the fire, or was it the left hand? One of his hands, which had signed a confession, must have been his right hand, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, he, he had confessed and, and, and recanted and then ultimately recanted his recantation just before being actually thrown into the fire down in Oxford where he, you know, became dead. So Reginald Pole. I was just wondering when we get back to him. Became Archbishop of Canterbury, Paul. Oh, because yeah. of that. Yeah. He, he, well, he was made Archbishop of Canterbury when Thomas Cranmer lost the, lost his. Um, and he was born life. there. Yeah, he was born back there. Reginald Pole then proceeded to basically be um, the Archbishop of Canterbury, presiding over the various religious trials and everything. Although he was sort of sick for most of his later years, so there's argument as to how much he actually presided and how much he actually was involved in. But basically the burning at the stake of several hundred people during Mary's bloody reign. So yeah, interesting place. You can't visit Sourton Castle because it is owned by somebody who probably isn't a relative of Reginald Poles, but you never know. So that way is where we're headed. Uh, we are not going very far, we're going down to Kinver. We're only really moving to charge the batteries and to empty the huge amount of rubbish that we've collected over the last two weeks. And also to finish off the year because this is New Year's. Yeah. So happy, happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's probably mid By the time you're seeing this, mid it's mid-February or something. It's not. It's mid-January. Mid-January. I'm rude. Okay. <laughs> anyway, New Year's is coming gone. But um, well, this is how we spent ours. But this is how we spent oh, ours. Oh, George. Heading down to Kinver where we will, well, we've, you know, on the way, we're going to pass through a lock beside a circular weir, go through a small tunnel, find a second lock. What was interesting about that tunnel? Uh, it's small. It's the first one we're going to encounter that's actually cut right out of the sandstone. There we go. There is a longer one afterwards that is much more probably interesting because this one's a very short tunnel. Um, the circular weir is kind of cool, so we'll get a shot of that. And uh, George has dropped his ball in the canal and he's looking at us to say, oh, I've dropped my ball in the canal. Save my balls!
Yeah, I didn't finish our video yesterday, no, two days ago, which was New Year's Eve, and we came down to Kinver. Yeah, I, towards the end, developed a bit of a migraine and basically just couldn't do see? any shooting. Yeah, essentially I couldn't see out of one eye. Um, That's not fun. Nope. So, we, we, we got through Kinver Lock and stopped. We were, we were planning to stop her anyway. Kinver, when you recover from migraines, it's quite nice. Quite nice. Like, it's a nice little village. We get to spend New Year's Eve here and had um, what could kind of be called Chinese food. Yeah. <laughs> we, um, I don't think the Chinese would recognize it, but... <laughs> um, there's a really nice playing field and like a big circular walk you can do through the village and through the field and through lots of horses. So that was really nice. Not really through the horses, but <laughs> through, through, through some fields near some horses. Oh, by the way. <clears throat> and yeah, Kimberlock was nice. It had one, another one of those circular weirs. You were telling me some stuff about... Oh, and there's a big pumping station. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the pumping station is kind of interesting because apparently the local aquifer is like actually an underground lake that they are slowly but surely draining, I guess. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's it's uh, it's an old pumping station. It just sits there and it's still in operation apparently, pulling up water from the aquifer. So, you know, saving people from having to have um, wells, I guess. And then as we were um, coming through the lock, is that Kimber Lock? That's Kimber Lock. Oh, the lock before there was that really cute cottage. Well, the cottage wasn't cute, but it had the really cute gate that was like lock gates. Yeah. And a little uh, cranking thing. And then as we were coming down this lock, um, there's a lot of um, private moorings, long-term moorings. And one of the guys came up to me because I was looking at the um, circular weir thing. And he asked me if it was blocked because apparently it got blocked on block Boxing Day and they all had to come out and unblock it because the water level had risen up and all their boats were floating up onto the towpath. the way in. Yeah. Which explains why there was so much mud. Yeah. But yeah, it's um, it's a lovely little town. It's an old town. It's you know from the 800s. There's apparently some um, like rock um, little monks' caverns nearby, but mm. we didn't make it up to those. And uh, lovely church at the top of the hill. And it's just really nice. Like yeah. Yeah. Good and best kept village. In for the last 20 years, yeah, for like 20 years, <laughs> it's got proud. all these signs of the Very best proud. kept village, rest kept village. Snorp, snorp, welcome to Snorp Wharf. After the removal from uh, office of Isabella, office is that what you could call, would you call it the office, yeah, the throne. Quite an interesting story. Basically, Reginald Pole was born here. Um, no doubt screaming and probably not, you know, actually having any conversations about religion at that point. But, uh, there are bikes coming, George. Stop. George, George, George. come here. Put your hand on him, he'll freeze. There we go, he's frozen. You know, became dead. And, um. <laughs> Why did you make me laugh when you said became dead? <laughs> there we go which ended not too much longer. Later, we got a water droplet on the camera now. <clears throat> well, that's why that just, the whole top just went fuzzy. Right on the lens. There we go. The Save my balls! Too late for that, George. <laughs> also Bane. <laughs> just had to wait for it. <laughs> so yes, Bane is Save. on the boat. Save my balls. Save my balls! Alright then, let's go. Let's do Sean Connery's version of that. Go on then. Uh, I shall be right now. Here is obstacle. Shave my balls! This is kind of Bane is doing. More Bane? Bane doing Sean Connery. Shave my balls! Shave them? Shave. <laughs> Imagine that every time Sean Connery is talking about. <laughs> protecting himself, he's like, no, shave my balls! And everybody's just like, oh lord, just, ah, uh, I'm gonna stop this now. Unless... Bane Connery! So that was 40 seconds of Joe coughing <laughs> in D minor. I wonder what that was. <laughs> <laughs> guess what George is doing, everyone? Oh, he's pooping. They, they're supposed to guess. Oh. You just told him. 100 points to the first person who got that one. Um. 
We, uh, we just, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's, no, I mean, it's a really nice town. It's a very historic town. There is a hot air balloon directly above us. Oh, wow. So that's kind of, well, not directly, but like over that way. And the countryside is really beautiful as well on the cruise as well. Yeah. No, it's been great. I mean, the staff in Worcester, Worcester staff in Worcester. Staffordshire and Worcestershire. Staffordshire and Worcestershire. Known as the staff in Worcester. Staffs and Worcest works. Staffs and works. Why is it got to works if it's a Worcester? I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm probably wrong. Yeah. Anyway, the staff is just as bad as it was a hand as.